Among the most important aspects of any communications campaign is to first figure out who our targeted people are and then how will we try to connect with them. And it all starts with defining who are our publics. Among our publics may be anyone directly or indirectly affected by our efforts. Some would argue that since just about everything is interconnected in this world, that everybody may be part of our public. And this includes the general public, shareholders, stakeholders such as our employees and their families, boards of directors, government officials with regulatory power over us, the news media that cover us, the students who study us. And, of course, among our publics are the clients and customers we serve, our global target markets, our friends, our allies, our enemies. Even our competitors might be thought of as a public since they closely follow and respond to our actions. As we pick out the most important aspects of our public's demographics, we're going to especially focus on dimensions of gender, age, and income level. We can tell much about someone's life simply by their sex, how old they are, and how much money they have to spend. We'd also like to know their education level, where in the world they're located, and if they're married, since that certainly impacts their decision-making process. And naturally are the complicated dimensions of culture in an international marketplace, and that's worth an entire field of study in itself. So let's look at some significant audience segments, including the demographic segment that we just described, including key measures of gender, age, and income. The benefit segment, and what benefits do they gain from what we have to offer, perhaps better health, or a happier life. The occasion segment, or when do they tend to be interested in our message, on what occasions, holidays, vacations, maybe a graduation. The usage level segment, are they high, mid, or low quantity users? For example, people who fly often may be a fussier customer than someone who has never flown before, since they will have a greater knowledge of options and level of service to expect. The lifestyle segment, are they active or sedentary? Are they adventurous or homebodies? And the position segment, do they offer hard support or soft support for a position? Are they undecided or in soft opposition or hard opposition? This is especially important in political campaigns and social programs. You won't want to waste your limited funds on people who may never convert or those who are already solidly on your side. Instead, you may be wiser to target those who are undecided or who are soft in either direction. Marketers love to affix labels onto key segments since it helps us in a quick phrase wrap our minds around the fundamental characteristics of a target audience we may be trying to connect with. Some of those segments can be summed up with a few descriptive terms, such as the cashmere and caviar segment, earning more than $150,000 per year, or teens with greens in the 13 to 19 age bracket with more than $75,000 per year to spend, perhaps they're living on a trust fund. Supermoms, single women raising children on their own and earning more than $55,000 per year. The Dating Game, who are unmarried people between the ages of 18 and 34. And the Prime Dink Demographic, meaning double-income households with no kids. Even faced with the dangers of oversimplification as we reduce complicated social structures and standing to a few pat segments, we may find there are efficiencies and profits to be gained since it is easier to get a handle on segmented markets with general descriptions, and there are fewer competitors in a well-defined segmented market. And we may have a better chance to become a supplier of choice to a well-defined segment and thus earn larger market share and margins. 
And of course, it helps us to custom design our message according to clear parameters. As we narrow our target market according to key demographics of age, gender, and income, as we consider important details such as where they live in the world, are they married, do they have children, are they high quantity users, what is their lifestyle, do they support or oppose our efforts, what are their cultural dimensions, by looking at all of this we will likely become better at customizing our messages in such a way as may best connect with the minds and hearts that we're trying to win.